Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome back to another video. Uh, today we're going to do an encrypted email and just kind of overall email tier list for 2025. We're going to be ranking some of the popular options out there when it comes to email, stuff like Gmail, Yahoo, and so on. Kind of ranking them in terms of privacy. So this isn't really an, uh, uh, a just generalized email tier list. This is more of a privacy focused um, email tier list and that's why some of them will be ranked lower. So guys, with that in mind, like, comment, and subscribe for this video. If you like tier lists, let me know down in the comments down below if there's another tier list you want to see. As you guys know, I was the first one to make a VPN tier list, and you can find that on vpntierlist.com. I've rated each, every single VPN with an individual video review, and I've been doing this for a long time. Also, guys, if you want to help support the channel, maybe consider checking out a data broker removal tool. I'm going to be putting my top links for my favorite products with awards on vpntierless.com. So check these out to get some really good deals on some really good privacy products. But guys, if you don't want to help support the channel, um, you don't have to do that. So just like, comment, subscribe, and let's get into the tier list right now. So guys, first up, we're going to be ranking Skiff. Now, guys, if you don't know what Skiff is, uh, Skiff was a very kind of new and very quickly popular um, encrypted email service. The guys who um, owned it were like constantly emailing me and nagging me, hey, you know, if you're a privacy focused YouTuber, you like open source products that are free, easy to use and good, you need to promote Skiff, check it out, you know, your audience is gonna love it. After a certain amount of time, I was like, oh, fine, I'll just make a video on it because I tried it out and I did really like it. I was like, what's the cons? It's open source, it's free. Um, the guys, even though they're a little bit annoying, are pretty friendly. The community seemed good on Reddit and stuff like that. So I checked it out, I really liked it. It was a really good service for two years. And then they just kind of sold the company and uh, deleted it after a year. So a lot of people were very upset. A lot of people like myself didn't ever pay them $1. So at least there's that. But there were some people who did pay for premium plans. They might've gotten some refunds and stuff like that. But mostly the inconvenience of having to switch emails and change your process and everything like that was a huge hassle for a lot of people and myself included. Um, so with that in mind, guys, that, that is one thing I did want to mention right off the bat. If you are going to pick one of these services, um, I would encourage you to check out the paid plan um, because that helps support the services and keeps them running. Don't check out a service and just use the free plan and just uh, assume it's always going to be there. If you find a product that's been around for a long time and you like that product, I encourage you to get the paid plan um, just to support that product so we can all have a good encrypted privacy friendly service to use because like you know all the free ones out there um, that are not privacy friendly are just supported by monetizing your data and stuff like that so that is one thing i did want to mention in this video though skiff is going to be d tier pretty much bottom of the barrel it's not even a service anymore i just wanted to mention it because i think it's a very interesting case study of what can happen so guys with that in mind let's move up to this one this is private mail so private mail is a service or email option provided by TorGuard VPN. I used to really like this one back in the day, um, probably around four years ago or so. I would kind of promote this one. I liked it a lot um, because you could get it bundled in with TorGuard extremely cheap for a good deal. And it gave you storage and everything like that. I had an application and so on. It did need some GUI improvements, I would say. Kind of seeing even right here, you could see how it was kind of hard to see what email was read or not. Things like that. Some filters could be applied as well. So definitely had room for improvement. Um, but nowadays, uh, yeah, hasn't been updated for four years. So yeah, uh, I think this one is pretty much abandoned. Um, no one really seems to be using it anymore. Unfortunately, it's just a reality. Sometimes this happens, products get made and kind of abandoned. So private mail, uh, I'm gonna also be putting into D tier because unlike Skiff where they kind of told people that it was kind of, kind of abandoned, um, it just kind of seems like it's kind of forgotten about almost. Another one people don't talk quite as much about anymore is mailbox.org. Although I do think this is a pretty good email service. It's hosted in Germany, um, or kind of made in Germany. Um, it's just not quite as popular and, um, uh, I don't really think it's quite as competitive. They don't even really have an application. Um, but outside of that, uh, it's a decent service. It's just nothing really that special about it. So I'm just going to kind of put it uh, maybe into B tier. Next up, guys, we have Tutanota. And this is a little bit of a different story. Tutanota, I think, has come a long way in the last couple of years. Um, they've redesigned the website a couple times, 
redesigned the applications. It really used to kind of feel a little clunky, a little low budget, but as you can see from the website design, a very nice design on the website. And that's one of the things I liked about Skiff. They've really done a lot of work into making this application and user experience very solid with dark and light mode and stuff like that. All the features are pretty much competitive with the storage, everything like that. Um, the reputation is very good. They've been, a long, been around for a long time, so they're not really gonna just all of a sudden close shop. Open source, also based in Germany, um, with a zero knowledge architecture. You can use um, Tutanota with your own custom domain and unlimited number of email aliases, as you can see, or addresses. Aggie, as you can see here, the revolutionary plan does include custom domain options. So very solid, guys. Um, this one is undoubtedly going to be S tier. They also have an iOS application, which I really, really like. So that's very solid. Tutanota actually did start an affiliate program um, recently as well. They've just really kind of been nailing all those things. So guys, if you want to help support the channel and you like Tutanota, click the link in the description down below for Tutanota. I would recommend getting the paid plan um, because like you're, like I said, you're supporting them. It's also very affordable. And bonuses, if you use that affiliate link, you'll be supporting me and my channel and my honest reviews and a really good company as well. So a win-win. And to be honest with you guys, Tutanota has always been in my long run runnings for best encrypted email option. Pretty sure in my last video, I rated it like A or almost S tier. Next up, guys, we could talk about another option, which I really, really like, and that's going to be Start Mail. I've kind of been discussing this one last year or two because I do think it's a very good service. Um, however, I've kind of been hoping by now that they would add an iOS application, but the team seems very kind of stagnant when it comes to development in terms of that kind of stuff. I don't think it's as competitive as Tutanota. That said, when it comes to other fundamental things like a really good interface, integration with other email applications that you might already use, like um, Apple's iMail or some of those other ones. Um, I do think Start, Start Mail is still very, very good. Um, I really like the website design. The pricing model is free. I don't uh, are, are very affordable. That's the only thing with um, this one. There is no free plan. Um, it's a trial, um, but they still have really good things like a limited email aliases and stuff like that. They were kind of the forefront of doing stuff like this. Um, they don't really give you quite as many custom domains um, compared to Tutanota. Um, I don't think it's quite as... Um, affordable um, or flexible or as many different options that said it is a service that's been around for a long time it's reputable it's reliable and it's also a good option um, but i don't really see too many reasons for using start mail over tutanota necessarily um, nowadays especially with tutanota just getting so good lately so yeah that's definitely something to think about Next up, we could discuss Proton Mail. Now, Proton Mail is another favorite of the industry. Proton Mail, based in Switzerland, kind of uses that marketing-based kind of, you know, saying we're in Switzerland, we're, all, we're kind of a lot better. But at the end of the day, all these kind of good encrypted email services are based in European countries with good privacy laws. Um, as you can see here, Proton, um, it's not quite as generous, I would say, as something like Tutanota. Um, if we kind of directly compare the plans, for example, Tutanota's free plan gives you one gigabyte storage, or three labels, one calendar. Um, we see here with um, Proton, I don't think you get the calendar access. I think that is something um, that you only get with a paid plan. So just little s small things there like that. Um, we have, um, when you look at the Mail Plus plan, you get support for one custom email domain, whereas Tutanota gives you three. So Tutanota just seems kind of aware of these little things and just kind of makes it a little better, in my opinion, than uh, Proton Mail in terms of pricing and stuff like that. Um, really, when it comes down to it, um, Proton is just slightly more expensive than uh, Tutanota, um, as you can see in the pricing plans as well. So I don't think it's as good as Tutanota competitively in terms of price and stuff like that. Um, there has been a lot of controversy lately um, with um, Proton Mail. Um, this is like, I don't want to give you my email address. Let's say, um, I don't want to at tuta.com and yeah, let's see if we could read the article then. Uh, oh God, no. Okay. There you go. Um, so there has been a lot of issues lately or controversy around proton mail. Um, in my opinion, these companies shouldn't really get political. Um, a lot of people comment on my videos saying, Hey, you shouldn't even mention this because it is political, which is kind of hypocritical. In my opinion, I think people should have opinions about companies. 
and they shouldn't really necessarily want their companies getting political or taking sides. But there was tons and tons of people pissed off with Proton Mail's kind of CEO speaking up and kind of defending some Republicans and stuff like that lately um, in the United States, where it's longstanding. If you're not familiar with U.S. politics, um, last time Trump was a president, um, there was like a lot of issues with net neutrality and stuff like that and giving Internet service providers more power and more control over our data. So necessarily not a good thing for privacy, but Proton Mail didn't really seem to kind of understand that. Which kind of made a lot of people pissed off, whether you're a Republican or Democrat, probably. So in my opinion, I don't think it's a good look for Proton. Does it impact kind of my my objective kind of scoring of them? Not really. Um, it's just something I did think I should mention. Some some people do care about it. Some people don't. You know, if you're saying, hey, calm, you shouldn't mention this political issue in your thing. Well, they made it a political issue. So it is fair game, in my opinion. Um, but like I said, Tutanota just has that slight edge over... Um, it just to further competitively kind of feature pricing kind of stuff like that. So that's something to think about. Another service that I crashed and burned is actually C Templar. This one I, I used to like back in the day. I kind of liked it's like nighty kind of thing, Templar kind of situation there. Um, but it was another service that also closed down. I just thought I should mention it again, guys. These services that are free, um, they really do kind of rely on you to pay for them to protect your privacy and stuff like that. If you're not paying, you could see them shut down or just kind of stagnate development like we've seen with all these different options down here. Now, guys, we've gone into some of the more kind of traditional email services and, you know, you might want to kind of think about how they compare for privacy. Um, well, I can't really put them in D tier because at least for security, they're probably better than these options that aren't updated anymore. Um, but for privacy, let's be honest, they're going to be C tier. Yahoo Mail, probably collecting your data, selling it around to advertisers and news sources and stuff like that. Um, where'd, where'd Gmail go? I thought I put it in there. Anyway, Microsoft Outlook, probably using the data to make their AI more powerful. There we go. Um, Gmail, probably using the data to make their AI more powerful, sell ads and so on. Their whole business is operated on ads, so not very privacy friendly. Finally, Apple's Mail, probably not as privacy friendly either as some of these options up here. Um, Apple has gotten, it gotten into some issues lately. UK has remo removed, uh, forced Apple to remove end-to-end -end encryption in the UK. So this was a huge controversy. At the end of the day, Apple is one of these huge giants that has responsibilities and sources in different countries and stuff like that. It's not just focusing on email. You think Tutanota would care about the UK remanding, uh, demanding this? No, they wouldn't care. Um, so this is something that kind of is a con with Apple as they have to kind of respond to some of these issues. And that is kind of why, in my opinion, it's not as good as an email provider for privacy. But anyways, guys, this is my final tier list. If you want to support any of these S2A tier products, I do recommend using my links. I'll be putting them in the description down below. If you click on that link, it'll help support the channel. You also support the company. Keep it going. Like I said, some of these free options, if you only use a free option with these email providers, it does kind of hurt the company because you are kind of freeloading, in my opinion. And I do think these companies do, do deserve your support since what they do is very good. And if you just want to use a free product and you don't really care, um, you know, these companies probably are okay for you um, if you don't care about being the product yourself uh, in terms of your data. So let me know what you guys think of this tier list if you do anything a little bit different. Um, like I said, I do think this is a fair tier list. I do think Tutanota deserves the number one spot right now due to its competitively priced feature offerings. It's constantly updated website, constantly updated applications. I do think Startmail and Proton are very good as well, but just a slightly a little bit different in terms of the competition, in terms of pricing. So guys, those are my final thoughts, and I'll see you in the next video very soon.